How you going everyone? My name is Michael Cosm and welcome to episode 19 of our Let's Play series. Today, today is going to be bits and bobs. Lots and lots of things that we're going to get achieved. First, and certainly not least, is going to be over in the farming area where I intend to get our farmers that we put in the last episode all leveled up and selling us some golden carrots fingers crossed in order to do that i'm going to uh, have to do some harvesting and getting of the carrots and of the potatoes and of the wheat and all that good stuff and do some trading so while i'm waiting for those things to grow up i thought i might work on this area over here this this farming area so let's start out with a tree maybe a little path and we'll see where we go from there because i have some more intentions for later on in the episode for that area as well. There, I think that's a nice companion for our other tree over there in the distance. Two quite large ones. I think we're going to dot a couple of smaller ones around here and there later. But for now, I've been trading up with these villagers. That was the whole point of being over here in the first place. And in doing so, I've ended up having to eat pumpkin pie for a while because that was one of the things that I had to trade with them. I've got 45 of those in my inventory right now, but let me tell you, I've got far more than that tucked away elsewhere. I'm going to be eating them for a while. Oh, well, they're not a bad food, to be honest. Uh, as far as foods go in Minecraft, they, they do pretty well. The one other thing that we do have now, because I traded some of those farmers up all the way to master, is these little beauties. Look at this. We have golden carrots at last. So the best food in the game is now really available to us whenever we want it because they only cost a couple of emeralds each. And as you know, we're swimming in emeralds whenever we want them. So these boys here are going to keep us fed for the foreseen foreseeable future. Uh, in the meantime, I got some oak leaves and some birch leaves over at our farming area. And using those to make our hedges, it's time to create a few more fields. Well, I've just been over here in our wood farming area and for all the time that I've been over here gathering up wood and leaves and bits and bobs, um, I've left a couple of flowers around, you know, in the hopes of maybe getting a bee's nest. Well, since the start of this series, that has produced nothing until today. Here we go. We've got our bee's nest produced on a single oak tree. So I decided to grab myself a campfire and show you guys the process of getting it. Because for anybody who doesn't know, I'm sure most of you do. But you get yourself an axe, which will break it best. Anything will break it. But make sure you've got yourself a campfire underneath. Otherwise, those bees are going to get angry with you. Also, have silk touch on your tool. And this one does. This hatchet has silk touch on it. 
So when I break this, it's not going to destroy the nest. And again, anger the bees and have them come after me and sting my ass to death. So here we go. Let's get our first bees nest. Woo! Advancement made. Total bee location. I love those advancements just rolling in hot and fast the last few episodes. That's great. We also get our campfire back with our silk touch. So now we have the option to do something with bees, which I've been uh, promising since episode one, I believe. Now, we're not in desperate need of honey, but this was a nice little happenstance whilst we were over in the wood farming area that it just so happened while we were gathering our leaves that this came along. So since we're working on the farming area this episode anyway, I think maybe it's a good idea to put an apiary in somewhere around here. It'll add to the feel of the place. It suits the agricultural area. And um, unexpected as it may be, I think it might be a pretty little thing. Plus, it can hurt to have some honey blocks and some honeycomb, should we need them in the future at some stage. I have a couple new fields in already at this stage. So I think with the new pads and the way things are feeling around here, over there by our new large oak tree is lending itself to this apiary idea. So I'm going to start building something not too fancy, but something pretty for our new bee friends so they can have a nice life over here with the rest of the farming community. And I'll bring you guys back once it's done and see what you think. I finished it. It's over here. And I think I'm happy with it. Like I said, I kept it simple. Didn't go overboard, but we have the innards done and the outards. Let me see if I can get a shot of this so you can get a look at it. It's kind of in two parts. We've got a little storage area at the front and then this area at the back where the bees shall live. Hopefully happily till the end of time. Right, let's go in and show you the internals. This is just basic storage, so if we have some honey and honeycomb, we can keep it in here. I might do a little bit extra on this, but for the most part, that's all it's supposed to be. This is the, the main show, which is where the bees are going to live. And it's all about flowers, as you can see. So we've got some beehives. I hope I've done this right. I'm not really used to working with bees, so if you've got better ways of doing things, you can you can tell me how you would have done it. I'm not changing it, though. <laughs> Up here, we have a uh, chain uh, hanging out of the central part, and that that's where this is going to go, this bee's nest. I hope that'll hang as well. I think it will. And uh, there is bees in there, so as soon as we put that up, it should release some in here. And then we'll get to breeding them up so that we can fill up some of these bees nests that we've made these hives should be full of honey shortly because i'll still be hanging around this farming area doing other bits and pieces but what do you guys think i've just uh like i said kept it nice and simple it's just about the flowers and the bees okay well the moment of truth has come and it's time to put up our original bees nest here hopefully Yes, it does stick. And where's my bees? There should be bees in there. Let me show them. I heard a buzzing. If we wait, they should pop out any second now. Any second now. Now, there you go. Two. All right, well, we have at least two. That means we have enough to breed. Excellent. And I believe we just do that by giving them a flower, right? Yeah? What about you? You have a flower and there's my other friend. You have a flower. Now make a little bee. Baby 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 bee. Look at him. He's tiny. Well, he's still giant. For a bee, to be honest. 
But he's tiny compared to those bees. This is adorable. Well, I better go get more flowers because uh, I didn't realize it was going to consume the flower that you gave to the bee. So I'll go over and get some more elsewhere and uh, we'll do some more breeding. And breeding we have done. I was roaming around here with bone meal uh, picking flowers for a while before I remembered that I've got an iron farm that produces amongst iron also puppies. So I went over there and got a couple of stacks and got busy over here. Look at all our friends. We've been busy as whatchamacallits. We have uh, a few honey blocks and a few honeycomb blocks here. Starts us off. Now, like I said, we don't really have any use for them right now. I'm sure we'll come up with something later on, but it's just nice to have. Plus, these guys are just, they're a little delight, aren't they? Whilst I was waiting for those ladines to get all grown up and produce my honey for me, I got busy over here too. And uh, to be honest, might have gone a little overboard. I wasn't intending on doing this much with the farming area today, but uh, stuff happened. Stuff happened. So we ended up with these boys over here, which are our silos for keeping our grains and, uh, you know, the, the, the crops that we get from our fields. So here is a couple of silos. I hope you like them. They were relatively quick to put up. Um, as you can see, I've mostly just gone with andesite, a little diorite at the top. And I should have remembered by listening at the side here, just put my ear to the wall. I should have remembered to put a torch in there, but I don't think I did. So we'll fix that later. This one actually has a door and inside with no torches. Again, microcosm. Careful. That could have been explosive. All right, let's have a look. Light this place up a little bit. Can you imagine doing this in real life? Putting a, an open flame down in a silo full of wheat or something. That'd be the last time you see your silo and your eyebrows. But, yep, yeah, we made it out of andesite, diorite, bits and pieces that we had lying around. And I think it looks pretty good. Maybe not. As much the bee's knees as that place. Pretty close. Up here you can see the winch system uh, for getting the, the grain up and into the top of the silo. And the idea is that when this fills up, you see, with grain, then it filters the grain down into this silo by a pipe here. And then this one fills up as well. So they're interconnected like this. The valves in between can be turned on and off. And then this one feeds grain back down into this silo when need be. Not that any of that particularly happens, but that's how it works in my head. Also, we have roof access to nowhere in particular up here. Which is fantastic. This gives us a, a little look on one of the fields that I did as well. And I did it just before I started building these silos. So it just absolutely populated as I was going about my business here. And we now have watermelons for days. On the other side of the silos here as well, I've got another field that I put in. And this one was our pumpkins. This was also put in just before the start of the build. So now we have pumpkins for days. That means we can trade with our farming boys over here. So we've done quite a lot of building over at this farming area today. I think it's time to pop back over to the village because there's a couple of things that I wanted to get done this week over there too. And one of those things is going to be infrastructure. So important in this day and age. Keep your infrastructure up to date, isn't it folks? So somewhere around here, I'm thinking of putting a little bridge in. And it's just going to be like a smaller replica of the bridge by the mining area. 
and I'm not going to deviate from that too much, but I might put one or two here connecting the area that has all the wood and the wood farming on it and the new Fletcher space as well to the main island just to interconnect everything a little better because currently it's a bit of a hop and a swim to get back and forth we can't get our horses over there particularly easy and i want to get that done and another thing on the agenda hopefully i'll get done this time around is a little spruce up of this mining area the the mine the front of it is looking a little bit drab still and it gets a little bit of a, a facelift every once in a while in this series so far so it's time for the next facelift i think and that's just going to be some minor changes to the front and also we'll put in a little bit of infrastructure here too in the form i think of a crane to be able to fill our resources from the mine into the boats that come to collect it and while i'm over here and i am reminded of it i'm going to go over and rescue this chap who's been escaping or or drowning slowly very slowly for a couple of weeks now out here where why just why i'm not even sure what's over there buddy oh you're coming towards the boat no you, you want rescuing yeah for sure oh yeah you'll kick me out of the boat almost in order to get in and get yourself saved how did you find your way all the way out there honestly what what are you people like uh, look what i've built for you here it's still it's still in production it's getting better all right just give me a break give me give me a few minutes to get this thing up and running there you go find a job oh he's break dancing he's so happy to be home oh i can't stand mad at you Oh no, we may have had a disaster around here, slash tragedy. I was just working on the front of the mine, which uh, involved me being inside for a while, and time got away from me. Oh buddy, you are a good indication of what's going on around here. Look at how bashed up you are. Yeah, I was inside for a while. Oh, they're... Oh, I thought they were my villagers. It's not. It's a wandering trader. So, to catch you up... I was indoors, time got away from me, as it does, ooh, bucket of tropical fish, and, well, you know, I was very near the village, so I don't know what spawned around here, I slept as soon as I noticed, there is a villager here, I was worried that we had a complete wipeout, which would have been a complete disaster, I would have had to start from scratch around here, and this is not the first time that this has happened around here. Every time I go down into the Skelly Grinder, these guys all seem fine. But the Skelly Grinder is not as far down below the village as I originally thought it was. So I have found, as I came back up to surface level on occasion, I need to get rid of that dirt above the door. These guys are dying to get in there though. I don't know what I'm going to do about that. We'll have to stop you somehow, folks. Yeah, I'd come back up and lo and behold, there'd be a, a dirty zombie waiting for me above with his boxing gloves on ready for a fight. And it's just, it's, it's one of the problems, I guess, with having free range villagers. You know, it's a choice that I made early on. I wanted these guys wandering around, making the place look alive and lived in. But as soon as you do that, you leave yourself open for this kind of thing to happen and open for terrible disasters to wipe your entire village out so i'm kind of thinking that i need to do something about it i really really didn't want to spam the places with torches i'll have a think about it the alternative is that i go every few blocks and i break out some dirt and i put a torch underneath and then i put a piece of carpet on top and even that doesn't look fantastic even if I I would get some grey for underneath this, you know, from some green for underneath the grass. But it still doesn't look great. It looks spammy. And, eh, I don't like it. But oh, that's just me. Did you hear about the experimental snapshots for 118? 
I was so excited when I heard that they were playing at least with the idea of having a block light level of one stop spawning for mobs. Oh, how good that would be. Please, let's pray to the, the Mojang gods that they go ahead and put that in. And put it in in 118. Don't make us wait for 117, please. Anyway, since these guys all seem okay, I'll have a little think about what I'm going to do with that. Maybe I'll go ahead and, and, and spam torches. Maybe I won't. But what I will do is go down to the end of this pier and see if I've got any boats left. I do. I've got some. Some boat taxis. And take you for a little tour. Show you what I've done. We've got quite a bit finished now. So I was working on this area over at the mine. And we have ourselves a bit of a, a crane to get bits and pieces on and off boats that might turn up looking to be stocked up, right? The only problem is now it very much is apparent that there is no boat. No, I haven't made a boat before in Minecraft, so I'm a little scared to try. But that might be something I do for the next episode. What do you guys think? Put comments below. Let me know if you want to have a boat built here. And I'll make something derpy. Maybe, I don't know if it'll fit in particularly well here. But maybe just kind of in the distance there. Coming in towards port. And this is getting ready to fill it up with coal. I mean, I like the idea. I just don't know about actually building it. It'll be derpy, whatever it is. But, you know, it could be fun. Anyway, this is what I did with the mine entrance. This is the latest iteration. Let me see if I can get a bit of a, a view on it for you. The facelift is complete. For this time around, at least. And I think it just looks slightly monolithic, you know? it's it's They, they put in as many uh, blocks to hold the place together as possible and to make the place secure and really it's mostly about just securing the place so they, they built it up and put a door in and when you get inside you can see why because everything that they're digging down here they're loading it up at the front so that it can be eventually transported over to where the crane is right so there's all sorts of goodies and valuables in here to be secured the inside as you can see is no different i haven't touched this or changed it and i likely won't though let's do a quick look down here just to remind you or for anybody who's new this is early days you know the first few days in the world this got done and it's looking very very simple at this point even this door drum roll please has nothing behind it zero <laughs> just, just a blank wall Right? So, I mean, this is looking nifty. There's plenty to, of digging done down here. But what I wanted to do here was put in a little rail system for going down along, and I just not, haven't got to it. And even today's, well, this week's video of, of getting infrastructure done didn't see that completed. It's just out of sight, out of mind, isn't it? But um, I'd like to do a little something down here. We'll see how we go. Back up to the surface. And I'll jump back in the boat out here at the front. And we'll go down along and I'll show you what I did with the bridges because uh, I think they look pretty good. They're not as detailed. You see the detail in this bridge here. You've got some stairs and some stone walls here, stone brick walls at the front to make it pop out a little bit and I didn't do that because they're smaller bridges I didn't do it on the other ones but hopefully it looks it looks nifty nonetheless so you guys can tell me anybody wondering what that random stone is right there that's the location of a spider spawner I've forgotten it's been so long I think it's a spider spawner right down there that we haven't done anything with so this is, okay, I'm going to have to get rid of some of these these vines. They're out of control. Or maybe, I don't know, do I like them? Hmm. This is our little humpback bridge. Now, originally being from Ireland, we had little humpback bridges like this around the countryside. Old, like 10th, 11th century humpback bridges. Just a hump of uh, 
stone or cobblestone essentially is what they were and that that's all they were and, and they look quite like this and they were always strangely steep like that's too steep steep much steeper than this even so I, I've brought it down to make it look realistic for anybody who hasn't seen a humpback bridge but if you have this this looks a little flat probably you can you know have a google on humpback bridges some of them are particularly bloody steep you wonder how you ever walked up it, let alone got a horse and cart up. Is my boat being... What is... Oh, I thought there was something in it. It's just the corner of a block. And it moved of its own accord. Do we have ghosts? That was strange. I whacked down some stairs here to get us up. And uh, over there is our fletching area. So I will be putting some paths in. That's next on the agenda. Let's hop back into our boat. Now, given that it's stopped moving of its own volition. And before the sun sets, hopefully, we can go over to our next bridge. And this is the second and final bridge that I, I created. And I haven't tested this, to be honest, to see if I can get under it with a boat. So, fingers bloody crossed. Uh, but this one is a little more fancy. It's a little longer, so I got to do a little more with it. But is that another trader or the same trader? It's another trader. They really want to trade with us, guys. Right, so obviously we're not getting in that one, but we might get in under... Yes, it's no problem at all. We can certainly get in through the center one as well. What do you have to trade, mate? Mm. Ooh, slime balls. I might come back to you before you despawn. I could do with some slime balls and I could do with not having to go over to the swamp and risk my life to get them. So that's our bridge over here. Again, we're going to put some pads in. This one is not a humpback bridge. It's just an old bridgey bridge. And it leads us again to some stairs here that will run all the way up towards the fletching area over here. And I'll show you guys that as well. That was only a couple of episodes ago. So pop back and watch that video if you'd like. But uh, over here, let me have a little sleep before bad things happen. Sleep done. And over here is our little fletching area. This is where our boys will trade for sticks for us. And we also have a little shooting range here as well, which I have still to try out because I tend not to bring my bow with me anywhere I'm going, which is new. I always used to do that, but uh, these days... Not so much. So I need to bring a bow over here and have a little shot at that. I went to the effort of putting it in. I might as well do something with it. Eh? That's uh, that's one of the dealies of being on a single player survival game is that there's there's no one to play with. There's Billy Nomads over here, you know. How you doing, guys? Have you, oh, you've raised your prices on me. Well, that was to be expected eventually, huh? I haven't been trading with you. But at least you're here. There are two of you guys. That, yeah, you're canoodling in the corner. All right, well, that's all good and fine and well. We've got a fair amount done this episode, I think. And so I thought I would throw up a side-by-side -side for you guys to see how things were versus how they finished up at the end of this episode because there was a, a fair amount done. It's nice to see the change, I think, isn't it? The main reason for that is, of course, the last couple of weeks I've been a little bit unwell. And I had that inspection and, and, you know, things, life just got in the way a little bit. So I felt like I didn't get all that much done in the last couple of episodes. Maybe that's just a weird perspective, but that's, that's how I felt. So this week, feeling better, feeling like I can get stuck into it a little bit more. So I put the hammer down. I felt like uh, I could get some significant changes done, at least for the farming area and some infrastructure. But we have a lot more to do in this uh, series, and not least of which is finishing this village. So maybe in the next episode we'll get stuck into that and who knows, maybe even get an interior or two done. Huh? Dun dun dun. Who would have thunk it? But until then, I've run out of time for this episode. Guys, if you like this episode, if you enjoy the content, hit the like button. Give a subscribe, it really does help out. And give a comment. I do I do enjoy hearing from you guys. It doesn't have to be feedback, it doesn't have to be 
any kind of a comment on what's happening just drop a hi say hello whatever i like hearing from you guys always until the next time stay safe have fun and i'll see you in the next episode bye is it the bee's knees oh god <laughs>